In this video, we're going to show you how to design a label using Adobe Illustrator for the Quick Label QL300. The Global Grill brand uses a natural craft stock for its packaging. We need to make sure that the artwork doesn't blend into the brown color of the label. So I'm going to show you how I used white to create this Global Grill label for the QL300. Our finished label size is five and three quarters by two and a half inches. To ensure that we have a complete coverage on the label and to avoid any registration issues, I'm going to make my label size just a bit bigger. Instead of 5.75 inches, let's make it 5.78 inches. And instead of 2.5 inches, let's make it 2.53 inches. We don't need any bleed, so let's go ahead and click Create. I'll start by turning on document rulers. For vibrant color output, we want to design and save our file in RGB format. I'm going to delete all these color swatches that I won't be using. And because we'll be designing with white, let's make a new spot color for white. Call this new swatch spot color underscore white uppercase S, C, and W. Change color type from process color to spot color and click OK. I have all our brand design artwork saved in another document. I'm going to go ahead and open that up and copy those elements into our new label file so we can start to build our new bottle label. I'm selecting all the elements and copying Then I'm going to paste them into the new label document. I'm spacing these elements out to where they'll likely end up. Since I want the Global Grill logo towards the center of the bottle and away from any trim marks, I'm going to drop a few guides from our rulers. It's absolutely vital that our UPC code scans at the store level. To ensure a high quality grade A scan at the register, we need to trap the UPC code in a white rectangle. The black UPC code on the white rectangle will provide a good clean scan read. Using the rectangle tool in the spot color white swatch, draw a rectangle for the UPC area. Next step is to send that rectangle backwards behind the black UPC code. I want to keep both of these elements together, so select both of them and group them together. As you know, we have a white box behind the UPC code, but we can't see it in our file. To help simulate what our finished label will look like, let's rename the layer to Artwork and add a new layer that will be placed below as our background color. We don't want this layer to print, so double click the layer and uncheck the print option. This will make sure this layer doesn't print on your final label. We need to see the white elements that will be printing. Let's add a color that simulates what our natural craft label color will look like. I'm creating a rectangle that's the exact size of our document, 5.78 inches by 2.53 inches. Center this shape on the document using the Align tool. Double-clicking the color swatch in your toolbar, I'm picking a color that's going to be close to our natural craft label stock. Now, you can see where your white elements appear. As you can see, our nutrition facts are also in white. I'm just going to make sure that the nutrition facts are also using the spot color white, which it is. Next step is to create our flavor level artwork by copying and pasting the pepper icon. This dry rub mixture is three out of four peppers spicy. I need two more black peppers. I'll option click and duplicate this pepper for the remaining and then shift click them to select all and group them together.
Next, I want to add the name of the spice above the UPC code. We're going to call this flavor Grill Rub and group this with the UPC code. I'm starting to organize these elements so they work together. Next step, we import our colorful photo of spices. I'm importing our 300 dpi JPEG image, which will be the same width as our label. I don't want to print this entire image. I'm going to create a border for the top and the bottom of this label using this image. To do that, I need to create a mask for this image to go inside of. I'm going to use the circle tool and trace the shape of the bowls and step and repeat the circle across the length of the image. I want this shape to bleed across the top of the label, so I need to draw a rectangle to finish off my mask shape. With the rectangle now drawn and selected, I'm going to shift select all the circles and merge these shapes using the Pathfinder tool. I have my custom mask shape. Now I need to make the mask work for the image. Select both the mask shape and the image and select Clipping Path, Make. We now have our image inside our border shape. Next step is to copy and paste this artwork, move it to the bottom border, and rotate it 180 degrees. Use the direct selection tool to move the inside image upward to show the other spices in the image. Now, I need to clean up my graphic elements, like my logo, the bio, the UPC code, and the nutrition facts. Let's bring the nutrition facts to the front so the photography isn't covering any of the text. I'll do the same with the UPC code. I'm going to add the flavor of the spice to the logo. Now that the design is finished, I can turn off the background color layer. Typically, I'd save the Adobe Illustrator file as an AI file, but I'm going to skip that step and instead save it as the PDF version that you'll need so that you can print it on the QL300. Save as. Adobe PDF and select the Adobe PDF slash X1A 2001. There are no other settings you need to check here. Make sure you are not saving your PDFs with crop marks. You don't need crop marks in your PDF. We're going to print our PDF label from Adobe Acrobat. I'll select print and go into our print dialog box. The printer is set to the QL300. Next, click Properties to define the paper settings. Click New Paper. Let's name this Craft Paper. Our craft paper material media type is plain and the media weight is medium light. Next, we need to set up our label size. Matching our Illustrator file size, the length is 5.78 inches and the width is 2.53 inches. Next, click Add and close the window. In the Properties window, make sure the orientation is Landscape. This matches the orientation of the label material that's loaded into the printer. Next, let's click into Color. Here we need to make sure we are selecting the correct spot color mode for our print to include white. Since we're printing white, select Data Portion, including white. Just under that, let's click Spot Color Toner Quantity Adjustment. Using the slider, we can control just how much toner we want to use. 
If I slide it to zero, it will only print the white elements in our artwork, which is the UPC rectangle in the nutritional facts. To avoid the color artwork from merging into the craft material, we need white behind our graphics and our photography. So let's set it to 100%. And keep the don't layer white toner for 100% black checked. We don't need white under our black text. Black will print perfectly without the white under it. Now click OK. We need to print a case of these flavors. Let's change the copy number to 12 and click print. So there you have it. That's a basic walkthrough on how to design using white for the Quick Label QL 300.